Hi everyone, welcome back to our statistics tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we learned how to find class boundaries, class midpoint, relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency. But in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to prepare histogram, frequency polygon, and OGI. Okay, so without wasting much time, let's start first with the histogram. Okay, so let's recall the data we organized in the previous tutorial, which is this. So we have class limits and frequency. Now, assuming we are given this table, or you prepare the table yourself, and you want to use it to create histogram, the first thing you need to do is to create the class boundaries if you don't have it. Okay. And in the last tutorial, we learned how to create class boundaries, isn't it? And this was what we got. Okay. So we will need this class boundary and the frequency to prepare the histogram. Okay. So to prepare histogram, first let's take a graph sheet. Now this is our graph sheet. Let's draw the X and Y axis. Let me draw the Y axis and then put some fire here. And then look for the X axis also. So this axis, the Y axis, we call it frequency. Okay. Then the X axis, we can write ages there. Then we title it. Okay. Now when you look at the frequency, you will see that the highest frequency is 11. Uh, let me count these lines. 1, 2, 3, the tick ones. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I can only use 1 centimeter to 1 unit. If I should use 2 centimeters to 1 unit, it won't be enough. Okay. So let me use 1 centimeter to 1 unit. So the first one, uh, this place, let me write 0 there. And the next one will be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4. Just create something that all your frequencies will fall within, okay? Then for the x axis, this is what we are going to do. Um, let me explain it this way, okay? Now when you look at the first class band, it's 35.5 to 43.5, isn't it? So we we'll mark the first as 35.5, and then we we'll mark this as 43.5, okay? Now when you look at the next class, the next class is 43.5 to 51.5, but we have 43.5 already, you get it? So we just have to do the upper of the second class, that will be 51.5. Then when you look at the next class, the next class is 51.5 to 59.5. But we have 51.5 already, so we just do the 59.5. You get it. And when you go to the next class, the next class is 59.5 to 67.5. But we have the six, uh, sorry, we have the 59.5 already. So we just do the upper, which is 67.5. Then when we go to the next class, that's 67.5 to 75.5. But we have 75.5 already. You can write it twice. So you just write the upper only, 75.5, you get it. Then the next one, 75.5 to 83.5. But we have 75.5 already, so you just write the 83.5. Then the next one, 83.5 to 91.5. But we have the 83.5 already, you don't have to write it twice. So we write the upper one, which is 91.5, you get it. So this is what we are going to do. For the first class, which is 35.5 to 43.5. We are going to draw a bar here, okay? That will occupy from 35.5 to 43.5. And what is the frequency? The frequency is 5, so we draw it up to this place. You get it. So let me just shade inside. Now let's go to the next one. That will be 43.5 to 51.5. So we are drawing from here to 51.5. And the frequency is 3, so we draw it up to 3. You get it. So in histogram, there's no space. Okay, there's no space between the bars. You see, in bar chart or column chart, there was space. But in histogram, no space. Here. And you didn't deliberately avoid spaces. So the class boundaries compel you not to have spaces. You get it. So let's shade this one also. Then we go to the next one. The next one is 51.5 to 59.5. And the frequency is what? 8. So we draw it up to what? 8. You get it. Then we shade inside. Then we go to the next one, 59.5 to 67.5. What is the frequency? It's also 8. You see that? So let's shade inside also. Then we go to the next one. The next one is 67.5 to 75.5. And what is the frequency? The frequency is 10. Okay, 10. So we draw it out to this level. So let me shade inside. Then the next one, 75.5 to 
83.5. So the frequency for that one is 11. Okay, so let's draw it up to 11. Then let me shade inside. Then the last one will be 83.5 to 91.5. And the frequency for that is 5. So we'll stop here. You get it. Then we can shade inside also. You get it. Interesting, right? So let's go to frequency polygon. So let's take our table back and look at it. Now, to prepare frequency polygon, we'll need two things. The midpoint and the frequency. For this program, we use class boundaries and frequency. And in the last tutorial, I taught you how to find the class midpoint. So this is the class midpoint. So for frequency polygon, we are going to use the class midpoint and the frequency. Okay. So let's take our graph sheet. So let's draw our X and Y as in. So let me draw the Y and the X. Okay. Then let's name this place frequency and this place is AG. Okay. That is a class midpoint. Then let me give it a title. Now for the y axis, let me do it how I did it for the histogram, okay? So that will be um, 0, 1, 2, 3, since we are using frequency also, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Remember our highest frequency in this is 11, so we must make sure we have all in, okay? Now for the x axis, in the case of frequency polygon, are you with me? We are going to use class midpoint, but before then, let me write the class boundary. So that you understand better. Now the class boundary, the first one is 35.5 to um, 43.5. Then the next one, 51.5, 59.5 going. So let me do that to the last. So this is the last one, right? This is what we use for the histogram, right? But in the case of frequency polygon, I'm interested in the class midpoint, not the class boundary. But I want to use the class boundaries as a guide, okay? Now what is the first class midpoint? The first class midpoint is 39.5, isn't it? So, you know 39.5 is going to be at the middle of this 35.5 and 43.5. So, this is their middle, right? It will be on this line. Okay, this middle line. So, 39.5. And the next one will be 47.5. It will also be in the middle of this and this. Then the next one will be what? 55.5. Then this one will be 63.5. Then this will be... 71.5, then this will be 79.5, and the last one will be what? 87.5. So we have the class midpoint on the x axis. For the class boundaries, they are not necessary in this case, but I'm just using them as a guide. Okay, so that's cool. Now, this is what we are going to do. The first class, which has a midpoint of 39.5 now, what is the frequency of that class? The frequency of that class is 5, right? So we are going to trace from this. 39.5 upward up to 5. So we put a dot here or a terrace. See that of them. You see that. Then we go to the next one. The next one, the midpoint is 47.5. And the frequency of that class is 3, right? So we are going to trace from here up to the frequency of 3. So we put a dot there or star. Okay. Then we go to the next one also. The midpoint is 55.5. And the frequency of that class is what? 8, right? So we trace from here up to frequency of 8. So we put a dot there also. You see that. Then we go to the next one. The next class is, uh, the midpoint is 63.5. And that class has a frequency of 8. So we are going to trace this midpoint uh, up. Up to frequency of 8. Then we put it there. We, get, we put a point there. Then we go to the next one, 71.5. The frequency of that class is 10. So we trace it up to 10. So we put the point there. Then we go to the next one, 79.5. Okay. The frequency of this class is 11. So we are going to change this up to 11. So we put a star there. Then we go to the last one, which is the 87.5. What's the frequency of this class? The frequency of this class is what? 5. So we will change this up, up to 5. So we put a star there. That's clear, right? Now we are going to use lines to join the points, okay? Now to join them, we are going to start from the x axis here, okay? You join it up to the first point, okay? So we use a line to join to the first point. Then you take from the first point to the second point, okay? Then from the second point to the third point. Then from the third point to the fifth point. From the fifth point to the sixth point. Then from the sixth point to the seventh point. Then from the seventh point to the last point, 
you get it. Then since we no longer have any points, you can calm down, okay? So this is how to prepare frequency polygon. Remember, for frequency polygon, we use the class midpoint and the frequency. But for histogram, we use the class boundaries and the frequency, okay? So let's go to the next one, which is OGI, also called cumulative frequency curve, okay? So first, let's go back to our table. Now, before we start the OGI, let me remind you that for histogram, we use the class boundaries and the frequency, right? Then, for frequency polygon, we use the class midpoint and the frequency. But for OGI, we are going to use something called math less than and cumulative frequency. And in the last tutorial, I taught you how to find cumulative frequency, isn't it? So we have the cumulative frequency here. Let's take our graph sheet to understand the thing. So this is our graph sheet. Let's draw the X and Y as is as usual, as we've been doing. Then we label it. But take note. The y axis this time around is going to be cumulative frequency, not more frequency as we did in histogram and frequency polygon. This is OGI, so we are using cumulative frequency, not frequency. Okay. Now, when you look at the cumulative frequency, the highest cumulative frequency we have there is 50. If we should put the numbers how we did for frequency previously, where we have 0, 1, 2, 3 going, we will not get up to 50. So for this one, let's use 1 centimeter to 5 units, okay? So let's start with 0. Then this one is going to be 5, no more 1. Then 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. You see, we get up to the 50, 55. Now for the x-axis, we are going to use mark less than. In order not to confuse you, let me put it this way. We are going to use the upper class boundary of each class, okay? But we will start from the lower class boundary of the first class. What do I mean? You see, the first class, the lower class boundary of the first class is 35.5, right? So we write it first. Then we write the upper class boundary of that same first class, which is what? Which is 43.5. So after that, the next one we are going to write should be the upper class boundary of the next class, which is 51.5, okay? Then the next one also be the upper class boundary of the next class. That will be 59.5. Then the next one will be the upper class boundary of the next class also. That will be what, 67.5. Then the next one will be what, 75.5. The next one will be what, 83.5. And the last one will be 91.5. So that's how we do this. Now pay attention. I told you we are using the upper class boundaries against the cumulative frequencies. Okay. So when you look at the first class, what is the cumulative frequency of the first class? 5, right? And what's the upper class boundary of the first class? It's 43.5, not 35.5. So you have to be careful. The upper class boundary of the first class is 43.5. So we'll plot the upper class boundary of the first class, which is 43.5, against the cumulative frequency of the first class. But before then, the lower class boundary of the first class we place here, which is 35.5. Yeah. Let's take it against zero, okay, as a point. Now, the first upper class boundary, which is 43.5, we plot it against the first cumulative frequency of 5, so it will be here. Then, the upper class boundary of the second class, which is 51.5, we plot it against the cumulative frequency of the second class, and that is what? 8, right? So, we plot it against 8, so it will be here. Then, the upper class boundary of the first class, we plot it against the cumulative frequency of the third class, that will be 16, so 16 will be here. You get it. Then the upper class boundary of the fourth class, which is 67.5, we plot it against the cumulative frequency of the fourth class, which is 24. Okay. Then the upper class boundary of the fifth class, which is 75.5, we plot it against the cumulative frequency of the fifth class, which is um, 34. So it will be here. Then the upper class boundary of the sixth class, we plot it against the cumulative frequency of the sixth class, and that will be what? 45. The cumulative frequency of the sixth class is 45, okay. Then the upper class boundary of the last class is 91.5. So we plot it against the cumulative frequency of the last class, which is what? 50. So 50 is here. Okay. So we are going to draw a curve to pass through all the points, okay. So we start from here. Draw, go, go. And we move like this. We move up to this. We move to the last one. Don't come down, okay. So you leave it this way. This is the OGI, okay, interesting, right? So do well to click on like for this video. 
share it and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.